Earlier this spring on our show, we talked about conifers, those cone-bearing plants, those cone-bearing trees and shrubs. And we talked about how they are usually evergreen and their leaves are either needle-like or scale-like. And today on our program, I'd just like to talk about several species that we have growing here in Oklahoma. And we'll start out by talking about a few pines. Now, pines are a very diverse group of plants. They are found growing in a variety of conditions throughout the world. There are some upland species of pines. There are lowland species of pines. And here in Oklahoma, we have four species that are native to our state. Out in the northwestern corner of Cimarron County, out in the Panhandle, we have two western pine species, the Ponderosa and the Pinion Pine. Down in the southeastern corner of Oklahoma, we have the Loblolly Pine, a really tall southern pine in that part of our state. And then we have this plant. This is the shortleaf pine, sometimes referred to as the shortleaf yellow pine, Pinus echinata and it is found growing in the northeastern part of Oklahoma and the southeastern part of Oklahoma. Now, I grew up in Sequoia County, which is pretty much the center part of eastern Oklahoma, and we didn't really have any pines around that area. But these are very abundant in the northeastern part of the state and the southeastern part of the state. It's probably our most abundantly occurring pine in Oklahoma. We find them growing on the rocky hilltops and hillsides, and we occasionally see them in the bottomlands, the lowlands, as long as the soil in those areas is more of a loamy soil, a good draining soil, because they don't like growing on clay. But the shortleaf yellow pine, if you look at the needles right here, you can see kind of how it gets its name. The needles are fairly short. They're about uh, three or four inches long, and they're very soft. Kind of a unique characteristic of pines. They're not very rigid. We've got some male pollen cones right here. And these have, uh, I think, just released all of their, their pollen, so they will be dropping off here pretty soon. But uh, uh, again, soft needles. And if you've ever looked at the needles of pines, you'll notice that the needles don't just stick directly into the little twigs. They're actually in little bundles. You can see here that there are two needles fastened together and then that little bundle is attached to the stem. Now this is one characteristic or one way to identify different species of pines by the number of needles per bundle. And generally the pines that have a low number or a small number, just a few needles in their bundle are the more heat tolerant of the species. You can see that this shortleaf pine has has two needles in that bundle down here we can find a bundle that's uh, actually got three needles per bundle so it's there's a little bit of variation there in the shortleaf pine but uh, generally a two or three needle pine now some of the other pines that have maybe five needles per bundle like the white pine these are more adapted to the northern areas the cooler parts of uh, the United States and the world in general. The shortleaf pine, another unique characteristic it has is that it has the ability to survive fires. If a fire comes through, it may not hurt the larger trees, but the, uh, the little seedlings or the young trees may be totally burned off. The tops of the uh, trees may, may, may just get burned up completely, but the plants have the ability to re-sprout from the base. So the seedlings and the young pines can survive those fires. The shortleaf pine is also used to uh, make lumber, plywood, veneer, and furniture from its wood. The shortleaf pine, one of our four pine species native to Oklahoma. Here in our Japanese garden, we have a Japanese red pine. And this is one that is another two needle pine. So it's a pretty good pine for the south, for the, for the warm areas. The needles are a lot stiffer than the shortleaf pine. And as this tree gets older, it has sort of a reddish or orangish tint to the uh, bark and it, when it starts kind of peeling away. Another interesting thing about the Japanese red pine is that 
they are very characteristically twisted or they, they sort of lean. They give you really good character in the garden. And for this reason, this pine is used a lot in the art of bonsai. Well, I want to show you on this pine here an easy way, a quick and easy way to prune your pines. And you do it this time of the year. Back in the winter, this long branch-like thing right here called a candle was just a little bud. And as the uh, temperature started warming up, you can see that it really elongated. The candle of this pine really elongated. This is going to be a new branch, and all these are going to be new needles or new bundles of needles. And the way to make the plant smaller or to make it denser, more compact, is to come out this time of the year and just remove about half of this or uh, two-thirds of it. And I'm just going to come in just with my finger and thumb, and I'm just going to snap out the candle. And in that way, I've just pruned this pine. Now, you don't want to come in with pruners and cut this because you can see all these, these little bundles of needles here. If you cut that, you would end up cutting those needles in half. And as the, uh, those needles elongated, they would be brown on the ends. And if you did this uh, throughout the whole tree, you would have a brown look to the tree. So this time of the year, keep your pine tree smaller if that's what you want in your landscape. Just come out and snap those candles. Take off a half or two thirds. Don't cut them, just break them off. Easy as that. Here in my hand, I'm holding a branch of an eastern red cedar. Now, it's a conifer, very common here in Oklahoma, and it has scale-like leaves, tiny little scale-like leaves instead of needles. Now, botanically, the eastern red cedar is not a cedar at all. It's a juniper. A true cedar is what I've got behind me here. This is the deodare cedar, a beautiful tree, very graceful. And you can see that it actually has little needles. The needles are about an inch and a half to two inches long. They're in little spurs or clusters that come off of the branches. They have sort of a silvery appearance, but a very graceful tree. I love the shape. I love the way the branch ends kind of droop a little bit. Uh, I particularly like this plant because I planted it here nine years ago when I was studio garden manager. And I'm so thrilled that it's still alive. And I say that because the deodare cedar is only hardy to about zone 7, or more specifically, zone 7B, the lower part of zone 7. So these are going to do better in the southern part of Oklahoma than they will somewhere like here in Stillwater or for, further north. Now, the reason they don't survive that well is because they tend to start growing before the winter is over. They're more likely to be killed at a 28 degree cold snap than down to zero. And that's because when they're dormant, they can handle those cold temperatures. But here in Oklahoma, as things start warming up in maybe mid-March or April, the sap in the roots starts becoming active and the tree kind of wants to start to break dormancy. So then it starts to grow a little bit and then we have a late cold snap and it can kill the tree. So one way to protect the tree is to leave a heavy mulch on the ground and to also leave the lower branches. You can see the lower branches have been left on this tree. We haven't cut them off or limbed it up to give it a trunk. We just leave those, those beautiful branches all the way down to the ground. And that provides a barrier to help keep the root zone warmer and to not let it warm up too quick, or excuse me, to keep it cooler, to not let it warm up too quick in the springtime. Another thing you could do would be to grow a ground cover. But whatever you do, keep the area at the feet of the deodare cedar covered so it doesn't heat up too quick and get frozen in the late spring. Another group of cedars, true cedars, are the atlas cedars. And we've got a blue atlas cedar right here in this part of our garden. Now, the atlas cedars are green and blue. And a lot of people, when it comes to this blue atlas cedar, they either love it or they hate it. They uh, uh, don't really like the color. I personally like this color. It's unique, I think, in the, uh, the plant world. You get that wonderful glaucous blue. 
The needles are a lot shorter on the Atlas Cedars than they are on the Deodare Cedar. And they're called Atlas Cedars because they come from the Atlas Mountains, a mountain range in Algeria and Morocco there in northern Africa. But these are a lot hardier and tougher than the Deodare Cedar. They're hardy all the way to zone six. So the Atlas Cedars will do better throughout pretty much all of Oklahoma. The Atlas Cedars are also more tolerant of heat and poor soil than the Colorado Blue Spruce that has a color very similar to this. So if you've tried the Colorado Blue Spruce and lost it like a lot of us have in Oklahoma, try the Blue Atlas Cedar. It's a little bit tougher, handles the heat better, can even grow in a clay soil as long as there is no irrigation system watering it all the time or there isn't water standing in the area. The Atlas Cedars, another true cedar. Well, we've looked at pines and we've looked at cedars, but now I want to talk a little bit about some of the spruce species that we have growing in Oklahoma. And right here is the Colorado blue spruce from the Rocky Mountains. And just want to point out that not all Colorado spruces are blue. The blue ones uh, and the green ones are selected for propagation in the trade. But uh, right here we do have a blue one. Again, you get that glaucous blue color. These are very slow growing trees. If you look here at the new growth, you can see that uh, you know it doesn't put on a very long extension of the stem and new needles each year, not like the pines where we had those huge candles. But Colorado spruce, it's a more compact plant, very dense, and uh, just a little bit of new growth every year. The Colorado blue spruce is a plant that is a little bit finicky in the south. It's uh, really not that well adapted to the heat here in Oklahoma. The best looking Colorado spruces are going to be out in the Panhandle where it's a little bit closer to the Rocky Mountains or at least the foothills of the Rocky Mountains where the nighttime temperatures are still pretty cool. Now another interesting thing about the Colorado spruce, if you look close, you can see that the little twigs have little ridges and the needles are single and they're attached to the stem. They're not in little bundles like pines are. In fact, if you pull on one, it kind of sometimes will pull a little piece of that ridge with it. But uh, very stiff, very dense. If you're going to plant a Colorado blue spruce, it'd be a good idea to put it in a well-drained soil, not heavy clay. And also, if you can afford it, some shade from the afternoon sun, like a large pecan tree or something like that, that will help it out. You can see that we've got the shade of some, some large Chinese pistache trees right here behind us that are uh, giving this little Colorado blue spruce a little bit of shade to help it get established. But uh, Colorado blue spruce, better in the north, put them in an afternoon shaded spot, well-drained soil, maybe you'll get it to survive here in Oklahoma. In general, the species of spruce are not as heat tolerant as say the pines or the cedars or some of the other conifers that we've looked at. Right here I've got another example of a spruce. This is the Norway spruce. And again, it's not really a heat lover, but if positioned in the right place in an Oklahoma climate, it can survive and become an attractive tree. There's some really attractive Norway spruces over in Tulsa and in other landscapes around our state. The Norway spruce, as you might guess by its name, comes from northern and central Europe and it, it is a very graceful tree. It's not quite as dense as the Colorado spruces. It's a little more open, a little more elegant. And this one's here in quite a bit of shade. If we're out in the sun, you would really see the side branches sort of uh, hanging, uh, becoming more pendulous, I believe. But uh, very, very short needles. They're not really all that stiff uh, when you touch them. But uh, again, not in bundles, attached singly to the stems 
and a plant that when you put it in the, the landscape don't give it a southern exposure don't put it on the the southern or the uh, the western uh, perhaps side of your home, especially in the, the central parts or western parts of the state. And if you can put it somewhere, again, where it gets a, a little bit of an afternoon shade from a, another tall tree, at least to get it established, it should do much better. Norway spruce, we'll see a few of these in our state making great specimen conifers. plant we have right here is an Arizona cypress and it's another conifer that has scale like leaves instead of needles and it's also another conifer that has that glaucous blue color. Now out in Arizona and the southwestern part of the United States these occur as specimens that have this, this bluish grayish color as well as the all green type that uh, occurs quite naturally as well. But uh, here in Oklahoma, we generally only see this one because the, the bluish Arizona cypresses are the ones that are propagated for the trade. This particular one is called blue ice, and it has a lot of that really bluish gray color. In fact, we had this plant, this very plant, in one of our theme gardens down at our studio several years ago as a silver plant in our silver garden because it has sort of a silvery blue look to it. Well, being from the southwestern part of the United States, you might guess that it's a plant that likes it hot and dry. So if you wanna kill an Arizona cypress, put it in a heavy clay soil and overwater it. But if you wanna keep it healthy and keep it looking good, put it somewhere where the soil is well drained and it doesn't get a lot of extra water. Now, the plants look better, in all honesty, when they are younger. As they get older, they sort of open up and they don't look quite as attractive. But uh, while they're young, they're certainly uh, very attractive. We saw some really large Arizona cypresses out at the range research station in Woodward on our program several years ago. The Arizona cypress, another conifer that grows quite well here in Oklahoma.